<sighs> morning stampers i am excited to see you this morning because well first of all it's friday woohoo do the friday happy dance with me um and then i'm also excited because i had about three different cards i was trying to choose from for today's video and i thought uh oh, maybe i like this one or maybe i like this one I really like the one I'm going to show you today um, and I'm going to show you two versions of it. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you sort of the standard card version and then I'm going to show you the one that uses the slimline dies. If you haven't seen these yet, um, they're on page 52 in the new book, the little um, January through June one. And uh, they give you so many fun possibilities. I always love a new and kind of exciting card shape. Uh, and I, slimline cards aren't totally new, but having access to envelopes um, that are designer and fabulous and ready to uh, accept these slimline cards um, is really fun. So here's the envelopes. They have those cute little tabs at the top. Um, and the colors are, let's see, it looks kind of like mint macaron. It's not listed on the back. White and smoky slate and mint macaron. So we're going to go with a smoky slate one. And we're going to use our Simply Marvelous paper, which um, if you haven't seen this yet, marble on one side, swirly on the other. So I'm gonna give you some tips for using that. You're like, Meg, that paper is only six by six inches. How are you gonna use that on a slimline card? So I'm gonna show you our sneak trick for that. And the stamp set we are using is um, also Simply Marvelous. It is for the record, which um, is a really, really fun stamp set. Um, it's kind of got a pun in it, which you know me, I'm a sucker for puns. And uh, let's see, I've even actually seen someone use this to make a donut. They kind of like decorated this and, and stamped it twice. Anyway, we're gonna use it for its original record purpose this morning. But um, good morning, everybody, Melinda and Carol and Doris and Kelly and Rianne and Angela, Tanya, Sue, Jennifer, Trish, Kathy, I can't remember who I've said to twice. So anyway, I'm glad you guys are here and let's get started. I'm going to give you some cutting and scoring instructions um, for this relatively new card size. We are also going to do some heat embossing because that record is just begging to be heat embossed. So I hope you guys are ready for ready for Friday too. I don't know. I am very ready for Friday here. So um, hopefully you guys have had a good week I'm getting stuff settled. Okay. So um, first things first, we have our card base. And for our card base, um, I have my cardstock cut. So our slimline envelopes are um, eight and, uh, let's see. I just wanna make sure I give you the exact size. They are three and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. So my cardstock, I cut to um, fit just inside that. Uh, three and three quarters by eight and three quarters, which means your cardstock is going to be eight and three quarters long and the width is three and three quarters times two, so seven and a half. And then you're gonna score that at three and three quarters, so you get your card base here um, just like that, okay? Pretty, pretty simple. Um, then we're going to um, go ahead and do some layering on here. And for that, I'm gonna bring in our slimline card dies. So they come um, with these two fabulous shape choices. And for our record set, I kind of thought that this one is sort of like that, um, I don't know, got that like LP vibe to it. This one's a little dressier. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this one here. And through the magic of television, I have one cut out and actually set in here. We'll see if it's gonna pop out sometimes. There we go. I like to just throw my die on the counter and then the pieces fall out. So be, be a little careful with your dies, but that actually works really well. So through the magic of television, here's one cut with smoky slate. So I'll get these out of the way. These are actually bundled, those dies, with a really great greeting set. Um, congrats to the graduate I've used already for December graduation. So happy to have this one handy. Um, and then of course, when you do the bundle, you get the discount on the bundle pricing. So. Um, always a good choice to save 10%. All right, the last thing I wanted to mention about that is that I want to save um, all of the pieces here because if you look in the book, um, they've done some really cool cards here where they actually use the pieces instead of the outline or use an outline and pieces together like and fit the pieces back in. So save these. Um, that's what they did on the butterfly card here. They actually just use the border, not this. So really, um, this die set gives you a lot of great possibilities. Here's one 
where they raised some of the pieces up but didn't reinsert everything. So save your um, scraps from this because you never know when you're going to want to use them on your next project. So those will just go um, inside a clear envelope for which I have so many uses. And you can see the graduate one is this one I've used. And then I store those inside the stamp case because I know that that's likely to be where I'll look for them. All right, someone asked a question. Dora says, was Slimline cards need extra postage? Nope, these are, oops. Uh, these are number 10 <laughs> um, envelopes, so not a problem, and you will um, be able to have them go as regular postage. The only time you need extra postage is if you add pearls. Um, Sneak Peek will be using pastel pearls on our card. Okay, so um, because of the bump, not because of the length. So, all right, so um, adding our paper to this. The dimension here is just a hair over three inches. So. I've cut my marbleless paper to three and one eighth inches. And then I took the remainder, so there's a strip left here, and I cut it to three and one eighth inches tall. And we're going to overlap here, and this is gonna get hidden when we um, do our uh, project here. Let's see, camera's a little wonky. Um, so this is gonna get hidden when we work on our, um, our embellishment. So let's go ahead and start off um, by putting this on, actually I need to stamp first. So what I wanna do is I wanna add this um, long edge here and I'm gonna put this down towards the bottom. I want it to be just kind of at or below that um, reversal line in that chevron pattern. So let's get this stuff out of the way and bring in my Memento black pad for which I need now my stamp. Uh, okay, so when I have a big stamp like this, I just find it so much easier to ink it this direction. You can really see what's going on and make sure you're getting even ink, make sure that you have the whole thing covered. There we go. All right, and then I'm gonna take this and stamp, maybe not the whole way across, but about like that. Okay, and you wanna be careful not to rock your stamps, of course. All right, so we've got our image, great. And now we're going to apply this to our cardstock. So I'm pretty safe on this one. I know that it's gonna make an even border all the way around, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just go ahead and stick it down. I know, <gasps> gasp, right? Um, it'll work out. Now the, one, the second part is the one that I'm gonna have to be awfully careful on, because once I've got this set, um, I'm pretty limited on where I can put that last bit, okay? So you can kind of see how that is gonna fit there. Now this one, um, it's, it's a little tricky to place this. So what I'm gonna do is put the adhesive on the back so that this is where I want it. And this is a great hack for using six by six paper um, with these sim, slimline cards. And now I've got it lined up right there on the back. Kind of see how that works. I'll just kind of hold that in place. And now when I bring this down on our card, I can get the gray where I want it, not worry about it too much, but go ahead and then get that um, designer series paper stuck down, okay? So just like that. Now, that brings us to this fabulous frame and getting this stuck down. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this to the back and I'm gonna use my favorite, I'm sure you guys could guess, uh, multi-purpose liquid glue and uh, if you're wondering why I always tap, um, it's because I'm making sure that the glue is down in the tip of the um, tip of the glue canister here. And I'm gonna sort of favor the wider stripes um, and go ahead and put glue on those first. And I can, somebody told me the other day, like, Meg, I did it, I heard your voice in my head while I was stamping, and to which I responded, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, but they said, yes, I had my multi-purpose liquid glue out and I heard you say, if you can see it, it's enough. <laughs> so good, I'm glad glad that's working. Um, but go ahead and, um, did you see I added some more there because I couldn't see it. And, and then I'm gonna add some little dots, um, maybe halfway on the edge and at the point of all of the narrow strips and then one at each corner if the corners aren't covered. Okay, that's enough. Um, it doesn't take a lot of glue. It just takes a second or two to grab. So um, what I'm gonna do is get my block ready here so that I have the, um, the added help. I'm gonna look at where the glue is, so I'm handling it where the glue is not. And then I'm gonna turn this over and set this down on my card. And ideally you get it set 
just exactly where you want it the first time, but you do have a teeny bit of slide available to you um, because it's the multi-purpose liquid glue and it has a little give, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and set that on there and I am going to um, go ahead and go on to the next part of our project, which is the stamping. So let's get our For the Record set out and I need a piece of um, white cardstock and actually, I noticed that in the catalog, their samples use black, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the white for this. And then I'll show you the sample and you can decide maybe you would use black for yours. Uh, but I'm gonna use my Versamark because we're gonna heat emboss this image. This um, record is just begging to be heat embossed. And so we're gonna kind of run through that this morning. Now this is my Versamark pad. This is the disgusting side of it, which I don't know what happened to it years ago. Um, but it still works, right? Stamping supplies don't have to be beautiful for them to be completely functional. Um, so if people really prefer their stamps to be pristine, that's clearly not me. If it really bothered me, I would just get another Versamark pad. All right. In the uh, link that is in the video description, I put the supply list, so you can check that for the supply list, and I did put in the reinker for the Versamark pad because of all my reinkers, the Versamark is the one I use the most often. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this on here. Versamark is a clear, sticky ink. It will probably not show very much to you here on, I'm not sure if you can see that, on our uh, camera but I'm gonna bring in the paper here now. This is just my scrap background. And we're going to add the embossing powder to this. So uh, the basics embossing powder come together as a set. So you get, I think, black and white, and I don't remember what else, another one. And so you're going to uh, find that they last you a really long time. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle across here. Mine's gotten little bits of paper, smudge in it, not a big deal, because mostly what you do is you tap off the extra powder, okay? So you can see there we have our covered image. Now if I had missed a little spot, I could dump some more powder on and fill in any spots. You also wanna make sure that there's no stray powder along the edges, especially if you're not gonna die cut this, which we are, so it matters a little less. And then you're gonna take your powder and you're going to just slide it back into the container, just like so, all right? Now, you want to do that before you go on to the next step because the next step is to blow hot air around and powder plus blowing hot air around is pretty rough. You also want to close your Versamark pad so you're not blowing straight powder into that. And let's bring our heat tool in. Now, if you haven't used a heat tool before, these uh, Stampin' Up! one is terrific. These are different from a hair dryer. They blow really hot air. And in fact, my first heat tool had directions for stripping paint with it. So you can see that that's really different from a hair dryer. You can't use a hair dryer to melt embossing powder. There are a number of uh, pseudo hacks, like holding it over the stove top, a really, really hot candle uh, or light bulb. But honestly, if you're gonna do any amount of heat embossing, the heat tool is just a great thing to have on hand. And you can use it for other stuff. I had a stamper whose husband kept one. He drove race cars and he kept one in his toolbox because he found that it was excellent for removing the decals from his race car of, of sponsors after they were not sponsoring him. So people would kind of come and go as sponsors and he always had a way to get their stickers off. So super handy. Now I like to hold my embossing work at an angle, which you can kind of see here, because it helps me to see the reflection. You can see when everything is embossed and it will be nice and shiny. And then I'm gonna turn my embossing tool off. When it's finished, you want to double check that it's all embossed. Give it maybe two seconds to dry or cool and then just run your finger across it. Your finger shouldn't grab anywhere. If it does, you need to go back and reheat that area, no problem. Now, we're gonna take next our Layering Circles Framelits dies, and this is, I think, the largest of the circles there. I'm going to go ahead and 
pop this on with a piece of washi tape. There we go, so that it stays exactly where we want it. I'm going to run this through my die cut machine and I think through the magic of television, ta-da, we have our die cut circle. So uh, you could also do your records in black and let me pull that page here in the catalog and I can show you the black record. They actually look really cool that way, but I didn't think about it until too late. So here's the one that they did. So they heat embossed and they did the black there for that. I'm gonna show you a different um, solution for the center part, and I kinda like ours. Now, when you heat emboss, sometimes your cardstock gets a little bit um, wavy, you can kinda see there. So I'm going to use my Stampin' Dimensionals to straighten that out for us. So we've got our, maybe more than I would use. <laughs> you guys know I like to use as few dimensionals as possible sometimes. I'm a minimalist dimensionaler. Is that a word? I guess it's a verb now. Dimensional or no, that's not a verb. I'm a person who dimension, who adds dimension, dimensional or I don't know. Some English person will tell me what part of speech that is. Okay, so there is our record on our card. Now the center I thought would be kind of fun to have match our paper. So I also uh, heat embossed a, not thoroughly, so there's powder getting all over my fingers. I heat embossed a record on a scrap of that marvelous paper. And I am going to just uh, fussy cut around here. You could also use like a circle punch to punch it out, kind of like they did in the catalog. And actually, I think in the catalog sample, they punched the circle out of that and then put a layer um, a layer of cardstock underneath with the heart and stuff on it, kind of like a little center record label. All right, and then we will add a dimensional to the back and pop this on. Becky, three degrees in Somerset, Pennsylvania. That is cold. Uh, it was seven, I think, when I uh, sent people out the door for school this morning. So, <laughs> all right. So that stray powder. All right. So, uh, yeah, a cool, a cool temperature around the country. Now we need some greetings here, and I really like the for the record. Uh, for the record, you're awesome. And then I'm going to add happy birthday in because I just think that is fun and I would definitely use that card a lot. So you could do this in different colors too if pink isn't your color for everyone in your life. Uh, there's this fabulous green that you could do. You could do a total grayscale card, which would be really pretty. Uh, you could have like one pop of color in the middle. And if you don't want a heart on your card, like that's just a little too much for excuse me, for the person you're sending this to, uh, just use a circle from the uh, punches here, the circle dies, and put a, just a circle over the middle with you know a little dot in the middle to be the record spindle, and then you don't have to have that heart there if you don't want it. Uh, you could also use the circle punch, lots of good possibilities. So also in this package are the yellow. I am a huge fave, fan, actually I almost wish I had done this one. Huge fan of yellow and black and gray as a color. Uh, then there's also this dark, deep purple, which would be gorgeous. Wow, that's really pretty too. Man, so many possibilities. Uh, and the light blue here. There you go. Sort of misty moonlight shades and so forth. So there's no bad selection in this paper package, which I have used a ton. And this is celebration, so don't forget that this is going to be gone uh, by the end of February. And is while well supplies last, so I haven't heard that there are any low stocks on it, but you never know. So if it's high on your list, order it early. Okay, greetings. Let's bring in some scraps. So here's my, my paper scrap storage for the Blushing Bride. If you haven't seen uh, my organization tips, I have one for organizing cardstock and I talk about how I keep my cardstock uh, handy. And we're gonna go ahead and stamp here. I'm gonna bring my Memento Black back in. And I've got my happy birthday, so I'm gonna go ahead and, nope, that goes on the inside. I've got my You're Awesome here, so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this one there on the narrow strip. And then I have the stamp that says for the record, hardy har har. Are you guys pun people? My uh, brother used to say that puns are the lowest form of humor, but he absolutely adored them also, so. All right, there we go, for the record. And Chris says in, oh my gosh, ne negative 18 uh, yesterday in Minnesota. 
I was going to say Celsius or Fahrenheit, but I guess around that temperature, it doesn't matter. Don't they cross over and they're pretty well the same down there? Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and take this and layer it on here. And I like this to kind of overlap a little. We're going to go ahead and take this and layer it down here. But what if these were heat embossed also? Since we have our heat embossing tools out through the magic of television, I have those ready. So let's we'll have to retrim. Uh, so these are just heat embossed. And one of the great things about Versamark is that it stays uh, wet or damp or sticky or whatever you want to call it for a good amount of time, which means that you don't have to stamp and heat and stamp and heat, stamp powder, heat, stamp powder, heat. You have time. So I actually did a whole bunch of these. I stamped three records. I stamped the words for three different times. Then I put powder on everything and then I heated everything. And you don't have to worry about that Versamark ink drying and losing the powder before you get to the end. So it's really forgiving in that respect. Let's pull in some Stampin' Dimensionals now, of which I apparently cannot find. Oh, there we go. Okay. I was looking for my edge pieces. And we're going to go ahead and use some edges here since that is just perfect for us. So I've got a narrow one here for your awesome. And I'm going to leave some space so I can make sure that that goes over the edge. Okay. And then I'm going to have this wider one here. And if you noticed that I uh, only put the uh, Stampin' Dimensional at one end, I'm going to actually use a little bit of, of the multi-purpose liquid glue here at the other end. You could use your regular, hello, you could use your regular, this one might be about empty. There we go. Regular stamp and seal also, but I just want that to attach out there to my record so that it's not just free floating. All right, for the record, you're awesome. And now we need some embellishments for the front. So let's bring in our pearls. I had that sneak peek. I don't have a ton left in here, but fortunately I have the ones that I want for our card. And these pink ones are perfect, a perfect match. So I'm gonna pop one down here and maybe one, let's see, kind of around the greeting there. Remember you want your accents to strengthen your focal point rather than distract from it. So that's why we're kind of keeping our pearls right here around the middle. This is our focal point of our card, okay? All right, so that is our pastel pearls. Now, if you don't have the pink ones handy, uh, remember that those iridescent rhinestone basic jewels match everything. So you could use those in place. I don't know if they're back in the online store. They were supposed to be back in this week, so they might be uh, back soon if they're not already. All right, let's look here at our envelope. So this is the envelope here that matches. Now, somebody asked at the beginning, is the card going to cost extra postage? The answer for the shape was no. The answer for these pearls is yes. And what I would do is I would cut from the designer series paper backing paper. I really like using this, although this one's not big enough. I would take it from a 12 by 12 paper. I would cut a layer, a card layer that just fits in on top of here, like a tag board kind of thing. And then when I put this in my envelope, I would put that layer on top and go ahead and slide all of that in together. Now, if you're worried about the person getting your card wondering what that extra layer is, you could just take a pen and write card protector, please discard or something on there. But uh, I usually I think people kind of get it. All right, we need our birthday message inside. So I've got my happy birthday. There are a few things that make me more nervous than stamping a greeting or something inside a card that is finished, but we can always recover. Let's see, I'm gonna test it to see if this is straight. So what I do is use my grid paper. I love stamping on grid paper for this purpose. I'm going to line it up where I think it's stamping straight and it pretty well is, so I'm gonna call that even. And then I'm gonna stamp that right inside my card. Now, if I had failed on that and gotten it in the wrong place, then I could go ahead and redo that on another piece of cardstock and attach that in the card. I'm going to go ahead and ink up our record stamp here because I love to have a little image inside and I'm just gonna pop this down here on the bottom. 
There we go, just to add that image. I think I maybe need one on the side too, rather than one just at the bottom. So let's go ahead and ink this one more time. Again, with big stamps, just ink them upside down when your pad is, is that size. So let's see. Then you gotta make sure you get it straight-ish. And I'm gonna pop that on there. Okay, so now we have our record appearing again inside our card. Are you guys ready to see the small one? Oh, Sue says she prints postal protection on that card layer. That's a really good idea. Heather asked, is painter's tape okay to use? I assume, Heather, that you mean when I stick my dies down on here. If you didn't, then let me know and I'll, I'll try to try again with your answer. But yeah, whatever works for you is fine. Washi tape, uh, I just have handy. Painter's tape, as long as it's super low tack, you just wanna make sure, because honestly, when I put this layer over, the tape actually goes across the, the stamped image too. So you just wanna make sure that whatever adhesive you're using to just hold that die in place isn't gonna damage. Sometimes when you put things through the die cut machine, the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, it really smashes down that adhesive on the tape. And so you might end up with a, a stronger tape bond than you might otherwise have expected. So just go ahead and test it and then not a big deal. The washi tape comes off really pretty easily. So, all right, any more questions to answer? Oh, Trish says she likes the swimming card. Oh, the regular, you ready to see the regular version? So this is another version of the card, not slimline. Also very cute. So I did the, sort of the same outline here with the line across. I got that bar in that sort of establishes the style of the card, that sort of a, a design feature element. I have our record and then I have the same greetings here um, embossed and that same little heart swirl on top. I love adding this heart swirl. It really connects this image to the background. And then here, instead of using pearls, I used those iridescent rhinestones. And you can see they, of course, end up matching whatever you are putting them on because they're clear on the bottom. So they're pretty fantastic. All right. I think that covers us for Friday. So I hope that you are excited to try a slimline card, which of course you can do with the measurements that I gave you at the beginning, the slimline envelopes. Uh, if you get these fun ones from Stampin' Up, these are uh, three and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths as they're finished envelope size. So our card size is eight and three quarters by three and three quarters, which means my cut card is eight and three quarter inches wide and seven and a half inches tall scored at three and three quarters. So that will get you started for there. The sizes for the layers, uh, we're in the video, but the frame, this frame was a little bit more than three and an eighth inch tall. So I just cut my designer paper to three and an eighth inch and you saw my trick for the ends, so I didn't measure the ends. The length doesn't matter, you just fix it as you go along. So yes, kind of a fun standard change. Change for standard card size, right? That's what Sue said, I agree. We'll have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Hope you have a chance to do something creative and, and crafty. Hope you have a chance to send a card. We're all great at making cards sometimes. Uh, there's someone who maybe you haven't sent a card to for a really long time, reach out and send them one, just a smile, right? Uh, for the record, you're awesome is a sentiment that could go to pretty much anybody, so. And if you didn't um, hear that trick for getting rid of the heart, if you need it to be a little lower key, uh, make sure you watch back for that, so. All right, supplies are in the video description link and I look forward to sharing more projects with you next week. Have a great weekend. Happy, beautiful Friday. The sun is shining here, even if it's frigid. And I'm looking forward to, I don't know, sitting in the sun by the window or something. So happy stamping, guys. Have a great weekend.